So welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board Award of Health meeting on Tuesday, September 19th, uh, 2017 at 6 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order at 8 Conway Street. Uh, Carolyn is running a little behind, so I'll chair the meeting tonight. Um, so I, I want to start with a with the pledge. So we'll pledge allegiance. If you all would like to stand and pledge or say pledge of your choice. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, so first up on the agenda is, uh, first I would like to announce that um, the meeting is being recorded. So um, for, for our cameras, our audience is being recorded. Um, the, uh, just want we have to approve the minutes of May 17th uh, and September 6th. I make a motion that we approve the minutes from May 17th. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve the minutes from September 6, 2017. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Jeez, that's pretty good. All right. Um, <laughs> and second up, any select board comments or announcements at the moment? No, we're. Um, no, the only thing. Well, uh, I wanted to speak briefly about the um, the sewer. Uh, pump station at Captain Lathrop once again. Oh, great. Um, you know, we're heading in the right direction. We're getting new pumps put in there. Um, and um, <clears throat> I still think that there's more outreach that as the Board of uh, Sewer Commissioners, you know, we need to reach out to those residents uh, once again just to keep reminding them to stop that. And uh, I, I did, uh, I was at a um, um, Labor Day party on that street. And yep. um, so I mentioned, you know, we're still fighting with this thing and just warning about what could happen if it, uh, right. and, and telling them we're changing pumps. And, and they also, they, everyone said, yeah, it's probably a good idea to, you know, go door to door and just kind of educate because some people just don't see meetings or don't get to town meeting or whatever and have not heard. <laughs> um, but whatever we can do to do that, I'd be happy to, to help in that. Can you guys talk a little closer to the microphones because we're just having trouble? Sure. Thank, Thank you for letting us know. Is that better? turn up the good. volume also. Great. Here. Yep. Oops. Can, can we, uh, yes. with, with having lived next door to the, uh, the public. Can you come up and speak into the microphone, please? <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. A friendly amendment. <laughs> I'm not friendly. <laughs> I'm not How here you, for Paul? this reason, but you know with the pumps there, I remember when it was a single pump and Hap used to get down and pull the damn thing out. Um, is there any way with technology, because, you know, when, when one or two of the pumps fail, you know, you get the red light, mm -hmm. red light. And, I, and I've, talked to, I've talked to Kevin and whatever. Is there any way to get that somehow that it dials out to, to alarm, you know, to, to totally notify? Because, I mean, be if I'm not around, you know, if I see it, sure. I'll call. Right. Right. But I don't know if you, you know, I know the cost and, idea. and so on and so forth. But right. it really would be, because if I see the light, I'll call. Because sometimes, the, you know, down right. the street, they're oblivious to it. I, I, I truly believe that once this new pump is installed, that it's going to eliminate a lot of the problem. Uh, the problem is the types of pumps that we currently have will become clogged. Right. Where the new type of pump just will push it off to the side, and it, it'll just either push it through as a unit or it'll shred it up. Oh, so it doesn't try to eat it right. and then get right. bound up. Right. Oh, so it, accept, it, it either it, accepts it or it doesn't. What it's going to do is pass the problem down to the sewer plant. Okay. So, I but see. like I said, that would just, yeah. like I say, if I see the light yeah. on call, I'll call. But sure. seems well, we like could you could do it. Because part of, uh, I mean, with technology now, Bluetooth and right. wireless right. and everything else. With, uh, with the changes coming up, it's going to replace that old electrical box anyway. So there's going to be a lot oh, of the box is gone? Yeah. So I think... Uh, hmm. Okay. You, you know, uh, that will be, that can be changed okay. you know, as well. Well, just a sure. thought. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> thank you. If you would hand out agendas, you would also be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> what did that work? <laughs> <laughs> Michelle. Do you have in your capacity to, 
sorry. <laughs> no, just very quickly. Um, when I worked in municipal, municipal government in Rhode Island, when we were doing education, I mean, education is the key to prevention. Yeah, absolutely. So with your small number of households on that road, is it a possibility for you to um, have a leaflet, a brochure, a trifle, anything that goes out with their tax bills, just mm. for those properties? Good thought. That's what we did in Rhode Island. So just, we, just an educational thing that went to their tax bills. There was yeah. a notice sent out on all the tax bills to all the sewer users. So it was very generic, but okay. yeah, yeah. they were notified. Specific for that right. Area. Yeah. We might be able to zero in a little bit on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, any more on that? Or you, you nope, good? I'm okay. good with that. Yeah. So um, we have a Board of Health comment. Do, did you want to, do you want me to reference this, um, Wendy? Or? I can talk about it if you'd like. Uh, sure. We have a, a letter in your folder. Okay. Draft letter for approval to, um, as the Board of Health, for the enforcement letter to Mr. Gilmore from the health agent and the building, assistant building commissioner to, um, about dumping on property okay. um, with uh, details for cleanup and deadlines for doing so. All right. Thank so you. if, if with you your approval, they it? will go forward with that. Have you had a chance to read it? I have not yet. I was going to take a few minutes and read that, or maybe well, later. Do you want to? Well, if you want to read it, go ahead. And, and now, or do you want to do it, approve it later, or what, at the end of the meeting? It's or? your decision. It's up to you. Um, you put it off and? Yeah, maybe up. when we return. Okay. okay. Okay, great. I'll just get a chance to read it at, at the break. Um, so uh, number four would be the town administrator's okay. report. I was simply, as so much of what I brought forward is integrated into the rest of your agenda, but yes. uh, in the good cop, bad cop vein, <laughs> you've just discussed education. As a last resort, uh, there's a memo in your folder from council explaining how you can actually go ahead with assessing uh, repair costs to the identified uh, uh, homes that are creating problems for that pump station. So okay. that's a last resort, but you do have that ability to do uh -huh. so. So that's in your folder. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So we have no hearings. Um, item six would be discussion items. Uh, Pre-employment uh, pre uh, physical exams, recommend, uh, recommendation from the personnel board. Um, so I, I was just going to explain this. I brought this to personnel board's attention. We do have a policy of kind of optional, and traditionally a lot of towns, this town has gone in and out, I think, of doing this, have pretty much required pre-employment physicals for people offered a position with the town, primarily in the public safety and public works. Um, but this is a recommendation to do that consistently for all employees and uh, to begin that to be fair and consistent to start that in January. Okay. And, make that a policy of the town going forward. So then um, I move to adopt a policy to have all employees offered a position with the town to undergo a pre-employment physical effective January 1st, 2018. I'll second the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Um, so number seven, we have appointments. We're running a little early, which is good. Um, so uh, we have an appointment to the bylaws review advisory committee. I don't think she's here yet. No, okay, so we could move on to the historical commission. Um, Michael, would you like to come up, Michael? Um, your last name is uh, Muhlenberg? Muhlenberg. Muhlenberg, thank you. Um, so I, I move to appoint Michael Muhlenberg to the historical commission. I'll second the motion. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to have you. Great. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Where do you live, Michael? Time. Yeah. On Hillside Road. Hillside oh, nice. Road. Yeah. There's yeah. a Moved bio here about and... 10 years ago. Yeah. Great. So. Cool. Well, I'm sure the good. board will be love to have you on. Great. Great to do Thank good you. work. Thank you. with them for a number of months now. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's in your file a recommendation from the commission and yes. some more information about them. Great. Oh, yes. Yep. Perfect. Uh, let's see. We'll wait. We'll wait on the other appointment. Um, new business. Do you want to do a, a church update? Sure. sure. I got a call from Jack Cooper from the okay. church yesterday to say that um, things should be fine. 
yet. They've uh, discovered another bureaucratic hurdle to go over, so it will delay. Um, and the expectation is the you know ability to just go ahead and um, come to the board with a purchase and or a gift, which a, a purchase and sale for a dollar, I right. believe, is likely to happen. It's just we don't know when yet. They have to file something in probate court. They have to have a hearing, and it's just a procedural matter. So that's the best I can do with the information okay. you gave me. Great. Well, since we've whizzed through this thing, yeah. is there anything that you want to talk about? I'm um, well, just quickly, uh, a couple of things. I went to the uh, Small Town Summit last night in uh, Charlemont. Just, um, th it's kind of evolving a bit into the rural Commonwealth. Um, they're, they're a group of, mostly it was municipal officials that, that had, um, were coming up with common issues and obstacles that rural communities were dealing with. Um, not all, you know, affected Deerfield, but but a lot. What they were trying to do is build a. They thought by by starting this rural commonwealth, they would um, strengthening 170 rural towns in Massachusetts. So maybe if we don't always support, you know, it might be not an issue that we're that that, ha that affect us. But if we can support them on, maybe if we have an issue that you know doesn't affect them, they'll support us on. So. Um, they're broadening it out to more than municipal officials, other other organizations to um, to try and tackle things like um, you know pilot programs and um, land owned by the state, so they're not getting you know like get Peru or Holly and half the town is owned by the state. They have no money to do anything to fix the roads. So there's different different topics that they're all tackling. Uh, zip codes, you know how different. People collect uh, taxes, yeah. zip code issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it it was an interesting meeting. It was good. It was good to meet um, representative from um, Senator Adam Hines was there. John Gould and um, representative from Paul Mark's office. And uh, so they're continuing. They're going to not just hold them in Charlemont. Now they're going to try and get them out across the across the state, really, to try and broaden that. So that was um, it was good to keep in touch with them. And hmm. yeah. Wendy, did you happen to get um, a letter from Santec? No, uh, no, no. Nope. Haven't I heard from one. them yet. Oh. Nope. I did, oh, you I did, did get it? I did receive it and stuff like that. Um, that we'll discuss at the um, sewer study committee meeting on Thursday. <clears throat> but what is the dollar amount? I think that their proposal was thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. To how do we deal with? Uh, to, I have to, to look at what they're. I have okay. to look at it and all see right. what. It all okay. entails. Can we make a copy before we go tonight? Um, oh, you don't have a computer. You? Okay. I didn't, I didn't print it out and bring it. Yeah. it they they should have sent it to me, but I did he, not get it. It, it, came, it was supposed to go to both of us. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Trevor, do, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk about the uh, FERCOG marijuana meeting that we both attended? Yes, I, I would. Um, so on s uh, September 28th, which is uh, Thursday, uh, the, the quarterly meeting of the Franklin County's um, Selectman Association is hosting a meeting at Magic Wings, uh, 5.30. And we have a, uh, one of the new commissioners from the Marijuana Commission, um, uh, Cannabis Control C Committee, I think it is, or commission, yeah. is, um, will be in attendance and, and we'll, we'll give some, some talks on that. We went to the FERCOG uh, meeting, I'm trying to think, uh, last week, maybe two weeks ago, and uh, learned a lot about well, we still have a lot to learn because they're, the commission, the committee's getting together, commission's getting together and writing all the regulations. So until we have regulations, we really don't know um, how to deal with it. Uh, but some towns, you know, who have, who have approved uh, medical marijuana facilities, um, there's language in the bill that kind of just flips them. They have an easier way to flip over to a retail environment. So if, we, if people have cited things in town, that were planning on just medical marijuana, they have an easy way to just kind of, and you may not wanted them, may, you may not have wanted them to be a retail uh, dispensary. Uh, they ha they we may not have much to say about that. So on the 28th, we'll have another meeting, and hopefully, you know, it's a really important topic. We have to get out ahead of it and try to understand how we can promote, protect all of that, uh, the town, because it's it's coming, and. Um, do you, do you have anything to add from that? Um, just that as it, it as it changes, we have to just stay on top of it because mm. it, they have a very short timeline 
for reporting. Um, and there were the meeting was over capacity at the FERCOG because uh, all the officials are concerned with good reason because um, it's a gray, it's a big gray area where, <laughs> where things are headed. It's all going to be in the regulations, and the commission is just formed. Yep. And perhaps you'll learn more at the Selectmen's Association meeting. Open. Um, but I, I think they're learning as they're going as well. Um, yep. I read that the chair has to then be trained in public, in open meeting law. <laughs> <and ethics. laughs> yes. So, um, so we need to stay on top of that. Um, yep. And I will do I will do what I can to do that to yeah. help. Um, the other part of the meeting was someone from the Communities That Care Coalition under the FERCOC spoke mm -hmm. at length and very uh, well, actually, to the group about uh, how this affects children and families and, you know, um, what we should be thinking about as we go forward yeah. with this new law. Addiction preventive. At any of these meetings, which I have not attended, do they ever speak to the fact that it's still against federal law? No, not much. I mean, they, they have a little bit, but... Um... So, say we have a dispensary in our town, mm -hmm. and they become very generous, and they decide to buy us a fire truck and a cruiser, mm -hmm. and the feds come in and take our cruiser and stuff away, and then, I mean, you know... Cause this... I know that the, the police, you know, statewide are being, are staying informed about this, sure. and on top, I'm sure Chief Pachorek is aware, and, um, you know, he'll make sure that we handle things well and uh, so Just yes curious. no I am curious about yeah that I think I don't, I don't so. think anyone really knows yet I mean last administration <clears throat> that would wouldn't have happened this administration probably I, you know I, I but they have a, their hands full at the moment I'm not sure if yeah. they will they will jump on that but they've got a lot of other issues to work out can we um, do that last appointment <clears throat> yes we like will uh, yep we will so um I make a motion to appoint, um, is it Nat Natalie McCormick mm -hmm. to the um, Bylaws Review Advisory Committee? I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The wonderful. chair of that committee is here. I don't know if you want to. Oh, say wonderful. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Hey. How are you? <laughs> good. Good to see you. Um, it, it, have you have you all met yet, or you haven't got together yet, or have you? Four times. You, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have. <laughs> we actually had our first meeting last week, and. What, would you like to come up and share a little bit <laughs> what you guys are working on? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I'm never sorry about that. <laughs> okay, well, we had our first meeting last week, uh, and Miss um, McCormick came as a uh, potential uh, member. She wasn't quite sure whether she would fit in with it, and yep. I, evidently she made the decision that she would like to. Nice. Uh, it was really more organizational than anything else and, and you know, trying to get past a couple questions that are really very important before we proceed, which Wendy is working on since she's the ex officio member. And, but she's, uh, she's working on those couple questions to see how far we, our charge really goes on that and uh, hopefully we'll have an answer by the next meeting and uh, be able to start it from there. Okay. Our vision is uh, to um, not rewrite the bylaws, but to try to catch some of the stuff that is redundant and or outdated. Outdated, yeah. And I'll you know, make a recommendation, you know, back to through uh, you people to uh, uh, put it on a warrant for uh, bylaw change or whatever the process is. Sure. To, uh, get these bylaws updated and or changed. Great. So uh, at this point, we're. Uh, not even going near personnel or zoning. Those are very complex issues, and there's some good people working on those issues at this point anyway. Yeah. So we're not touching those. Okay. Other than that? It's a big task. It, it is. It's bigger than we thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But, sure. What's that? It's a it's big bigger, task. It's bigger well, than we thought, but... Uh, it's it's yeah. not something... It's important. It, if anybody's expecting to get done in three or four months, it's not going to happen. It's going right. to be a slow, long process. There's going to be monies involved, and it's so it's you know it's it's going to take time, you know, because it's it's been let go for so many years, mm -hmm. and there's redundancy after redundancy in the book. You've you really got to go through the whole book to clean up one portion. Right. You know, it just 
goes on and on. And they say we've got a couple major questions at this point that we're working on before our really get into trying to review some of this stuff. Okay. Good. Thanks. Great. Thank you for your work on that, for sure. Please let us know if there's anything we can help with in the meantime. Okay. Um, if you're coming up on public comment. Sure. Yeah, while those, you're in the chair. I have one of those as well, as long <laughs> as I'm sitting here. You're welcome to start. <laughs> okay. Um, well, unfortunately, the chair is not here because this is directed at all three select board meetings, but I will, you know, email a copy to uh, Wendy uh, mm -hmm. for her. And this is a public comment to the select board about the uh, September 6, uh, 19, uh, 2017 meeting. Um, I just watched it a couple nights ago on YouTube, and yeah. I got a little upset over some of the comments that were made. Uh, one of the comments was the CPA comments. The comment was made and reiter reiterated a couple times to the public that we gave back $200,000 back to the CPA. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, there never was even an application made to the CPA Correct. committee. There never was a recommendation at town meeting floor by the Community Preservation Committee, and there right. never was a vote at the town meeting for any amount of money to be used for the pending gift of the church. Right. Therefore, nothing was given back to anyone. Now, this is a total misleading statement to the public, and this is just another example how some people just assume that the CPA monies are another pot of money that, uh, for free, mm -hmm. and that's wrong. And if, if you don't know what the statements are, how the statements should be made, then just avoid them. Because that is a bogus statement. Because you had the public believing that you give it, because the question came back, why did you give back the $200,000? Mm. So the assumption was that, we that, already had it. that you already had it. Right. You hadn't even started the process. Uh, I, I, I take that well, back. From yeah. what I understand, you I started the process, but you rescinded the application. We did apply, right. and Correct. they, they right. were very receptive. Right. Yeah. But that should have been the answer. We, right. we initially applied for 200000 if that's what it was, but we rescinded the application. Right. That's fine. But this other these kind of statements, and it's, I'm just picking on this one because this is the most recent, but it mm -hmm. happens time and time again that these bogus statements are being put out to the public. And it needs to stop. The um, comments were made about using CPA money for preservation and restoration of the church property. That's fine, and, the, and, and with, along with some architect comments. The comments were made that each member of the uh, uh, select board were talking to different architects about work on the church property. Well, first you need to inquire if such architect is familiar with the Department of Interior Standards, because one is going to blow the cost right out of sight, and secondly, if you're going to use CPA money, that's how it's going to be done, according to right. DP, uh, Department of Interior Standards. So before you go jumping into an assumption that you're going to use CPA money, now you should go back to what the walkthrough was earlier this year. I think that's, I think that's you know, just to stop you a second, I think that's generally, uh, that, at least I'll speak for myself, that's kind of where I was coming down and saying it was too early to do that. We hadn't had anybody, so it's... To, to continue with that process was too premature. So we hadn't picked, we hadn't had an architect, we hadn't had a plan, we didn't have a building. So at that time to continue with the process of asking for the money, um, while they, I think, were receptive to us, um, we just, uh, we, it just wasn't the right time. Well, that wasn't what, that wasn't what, what came across. Okay? Correct. And, and what yeah, I'm talking to is the conversation that the three of us were talking about eat a whole bunch of, you know, Henry was talking to some people, evidently Carolyn was talking, you're talking. Okay, mm -hmm. you have a town administrator here, mm -hmm. okay? It's not her job to try to figure out who you talk to mm -hmm. and what you said and who you talk to and what you said and who you talk to. If you have different people, then her job would be to you give the list to her in her contact rather than that's, her having to turn we, around and try to figure out Bruce, who said and what I think you're, did you're what. a little ahead of it because that's exactly where we were at. We were kind of reaching out to see who we'd want to invite. We haven't met with anybody. We haven't walked we haven't through anything. Anybody. That's not what yeah. you said. Then, no, it is. It is. So if you look back at the tape, you'll say that uh, I, I was at a selectman meeting. I knew somebody there that was an architect, and I said maybe they would be interested in looking at the building. So right. That's and as far said, as I've gotten. And I talked to them and waiting for them to come back from vacation. I kept, you know, Wendy apprised to that. And when he's back, I think Wendy would set up a time and we'd 
do a quick walkthrough. So, but the task should the, the task should be, Wendy. I have this this person. Would you contact that? Me? Has that, that has she, happened? That way, she as administrator is asking the same question of every person that's involved. Would that's, it be that's your how conversation, it would, my conversation, or anybody else? What you brought across from the television uh, on on the other uh, meeting that mm -hmm. night was that you're all going to talk to this guy and you're going to talk to this guy. Well, who knows what you're going to talk to? You know. Henry may be say, "Well, we have this church project." You may say, "Well, we're going to uh, we looked at renovate, renovating the uh, steeple because mm -hmm. that's leaking." Uh, Carolyn may say, "Well, we want to need to uh, see what the needs are for the structure." You don't. I think have, we agree with you. And then Wendy gets a whole bunch of things of trying to figure out who said what to whom, and that's wrong. I think we be, agree with the you. The list throws to her. She has a staff. Of they course. can work on it. She comes back with a report and says you. You can't, you would not run a business the way you are running this town right now. I, I Things think, have gotten I think out you're, of hand. I, think, I, think, so, I don't and, think that's accurate, Bruce. And, now, and the other thing is, is uh, on that walkthrough earlier this year, the consent, you know, when, which was by some town officers, officials, and some of the public, there was a, a consensus that an engineering study be done first, a fe feasibility be done second. And there seems to be lost that emphasis and all we're concerned with doing is getting the building occupiable no. and you've missed well this is what you're coming across with yeah. for the public uh, and if that's I, not your intention not the then intent. say that well we, but this is what you are coming across yeah. with we with have the i don't think we're there yet bruce we don't have I the building not there. and we don't have a we, we don't have an engineer picked out i mean we have to set the process in place so I think, exactly. I think it's it's way too soon to say we're we're off on all these other tangents when we're but, not even there yet. We're discussing and we're getting feedback from people to see what people think in the town. Um, there's a lot of work exactly, to be done and, and ahead of time. I agree with you. That is exactly. So what I I'm think saying, we're on the same. That's not what's coming across. Yeah, I'm sorry the you didn't get that over no, the, over that message. It's, but. It's, uh, you're 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 saying that we already have a process going and no. it's already in second gear. Well, this no. is, and so anyway, uh, my last statement is. Uh, you hired a time administrator to help govern the town under your direction. She cannot do her job if each of you go your separate ways. You have three people go, giving different stories at the request of multiple persons. Now, the town administrator has to try to figure out who said what to whom. I would hope that you have enough confidence in the administrator to give her a task with a list of names and requests, if you feel is necessary, for her and her assistant to follow up on so your time is better spent on other issue and the administrator's time is spent following up your direction and reporting her findings rather than trying to interpret who said what to whom. If you were to use the administrator as an administrator, then she might have a little more time to look and apply for various grants as you requested, as well as research other opportunities that may be available for Deerfield. If you continue to cause her to use her time for menial tasks rather than use her experience and capability to her best, this town will continue to just exist and not flourish. I would highly recommend that the two newer members, especially of the select board, read the town administrator position assessment dated October 2013 and created by the Department of Legal Services. It is posted on the town website under the select board tab entitled DOR Report on TA Position. Even though it was published in 2013, the suggestions and recommendations are still valid. This report was requested by the select board. Its main focus was the administrator position, but there are some very good recommendations, I thought, for the select board to implement. In closing, I'd like to reiterate that you, the select board, look at your positions in the administrator position and recreate both positions for more efficient operation for the benefit of the town of Deerfield. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Anybody else? Thank you for warming them up, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Skip Olmstead. Uh, Hello, Skip. I also came to talk about the church. All uh, right. And, and essentially, uh, it involved, I guess, rumors that, you know, we've got some problems with the church that, you know, that Bruce mentioned the steeple and that we've heard structural issues. Yep. And at least to the best of my knowledge, no one with a formal background and an engineering background has ever looked at the building and given us a, a detailed report of what Correct. the problems are. We do know that there are certain things that need to be done to the building at that point in time that we, that we take possession of it in order to meet 
handicapped accessibility and a few other things too, but that, those aren't the issues. So most recently, uh, the issue that was, I'm gonna call it a rumor or whatever that I heard, was that we have a structural problem with the church and it may require tearing the sanctuary down. And it's, you know, I basically at that point in time want to throw up my hands and say, look, Wendy gave you guys an email or memo requesting that we do a structural study or whatever it was back in February, and yep. we haven't done it. Right. So I would like to request that we do that as quickly as possible. Sure. And it, we, it needs to go out. I want to make sure it goes out to someone or a group of people who really are in a position to make those uh, kind of decisions. Do we have a problem or don't we? Let's find out. Let's get it done. Let's get it done as quickly as possible. We're dragging it on. So I would like to request that. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, that's, I think that's where we're, I, I believe, I don't want to speak for the other two, but I think that's where we're going because we, do we, we need, need to, to decide. Take a lot? Can, we, can we do that within the next couple of weeks? No. No. I, see, I don't want to do that. I, I'm until sitting here we being kind it. of quiet, but mm -hmm. as you all know, the general public, everything that the three of us do has to be in the open. We don't get a chance to, you know, talk and do all the things that we really need to do. I don't understand. This is exactly why government is so messed up in my mind. Uh, we, it's my position that we don't own that property yet. Right. And at the point that when we do get it, then we can get a professional people to go in there and do that. Otherwise, we're spending your taxpayers' dollars for something that might not happen. This was going to happen some time ago, and everybody involved says it's going to happen, but it hasn't happened. So just think if we spend twenty or $30,000 for them to tell us what conditions that's in, and we never get the church. What a waste of taxpayers' dollars. Now, I, like you, would love to be on top of this and get it done, but we don't know what's going to get done because we don't own it. So, so at that point that, in time that we, that so, we have possession when we yep. actually own it, is that the first priority? Yes. Then, yes. Then we would you know, get professional people involved. Even, though, even that in itself, you know, like what Bruce mentioned, well, we talk about this. We do. You know, on our own, we try to go out and find different people in, who would, first of all, be interested and involved with this, is qualified to do it, and then we talk in public like this, mm -hmm. and it does seem like we're throwing out ideas and stuff like that. And, and essentially, that is what we're doing. But Wendy doesn't sit down and go chasing after, oh, well, Kip said go see Jeff, and he said go see Harry. Yeah. And she, you know, it's just, we're just collaborating. We're talking, you know, brainstorming, whatever you want to call it, because this is our opportunity to do it in front of the public for everybody mm -hmm. to see. It might not be as organized as you'd like it to be, but unfortunately, this is the process that we have to follow. Well, I guess it wasn't so much that it, yeah. it, was, it was the fact that there was some sort of discussion, and I don't know where it took place because no one seems to uh, have I, noticed <laughs> that there was a discussion at, at a Board of Selectmen's meeting yeah. where it was indicated that there was a structural issue. And it's like, well, I've been so involved with this he, thing since it started. Don't and really I, know. I don't know if it's a structural know. issue. I think the only, the only thing that that I have been on a couple of tours with the building uh, inspectors of the town and several times that I've gone into the basement to look um, I keep hearing well that you know pillars bad and these beams and you can't walk past here and we're gonna have to rope this off and to that to a layman's term who's a little bit in the construction industry it sounds like there might be structural issues and then you you know you look around and see the condition of that foundation and basement and, you, and so as a selectman in town, as I'm out doing my everyday personal life, I talk to different residents and ask, you know, what do you think? Well, if, you, if we got the building, what do you think we should do? What are the best uses? What about long term in many years down the road? I mean, are we just looking for a short term fix to, to house our seniors that are living right now? Or are we looking to invest long term in our, in our community? What other, what other uses could we use if, first, if the uh, instructional engineers went in and said, look, it's going to be a 500,000, whatever, I'm stabbing at numbers, 
to redo this whole thing, you're better off, you know, for a 20, 30, 40, 50 year plan to maybe take down this part of the building or not. Maybe it's to lift it up and do a new foundation. Um, those are just different ideas that people would want to think about because we, I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to do short term fixes for our seniors. I want them to have a nice building and I want to think outside the box in long term. And I want every single option and idea laid out on the table because this is the time when people need to learn and listen and think. And just because somebody says, hey, maybe that building should be taken down, doesn't mean that's the direction we would go. But if I was, I would be derelict if I didn't say, hey, let's look at that. Is that something that's best for our town? Or, you know, should we take that down and put a structure above so we can use the second floor. We're not heating all this air. Um, you know, we can't use the balconies as it is. They're way, you know, they're, they're, they're just not up to code. So what if is we, the code? If what we, is the code? Uh, well, I just know that you'd fall down at your needs if, if you were up there. I, I understand. My, 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 point, my point is what we, re, what we need. Of course. If, if you want to wait until we actually get the building, then I certainly am not going to argue. But the moment that we do, definitely want to see that structural engineer. I agree with and you. Frankly, I agree with Bruce. frankly, I would like that to go out as an RFP, mm -hmm. not just go grab the, the guy down the street who's sure. willing to do it for a thousand bucks. Right. Um, I, I, like you, I feel like it's worth investing in our seniors in our town long term. And I don't want to do just uh, just because we know somebody thing. But not that we couldn't find good information that way. but. I think the right way to do it is to read, as you said, an RFP or something to come out and see what we can get for good quality people to come in and evaluate the building and then evaluate the town and what, what does everybody think? Not just people who went there or have been in, but just at all of our seniors, all of our people long term. What do we want for this town and for our seniors and for a community building? You know, uh, could we use that second floor for other uses if we, if we ended up making it more structured? Maybe it doesn't even need to be. Maybe we just beef up a couple of the lolly columns and put a handicap ramp in and a couple bathrooms and that's it. That's all the town wants to do. But it would be crazy not to think larger about it um, at this time because thinking doesn't cost any money, but we could just you know, get people's ideas. And, um, and also I'd like to go one step further is, you know, I want to have some sort of a, basically like an interview process to these people that come in because I don't want to see this town do for that building like we do at the sewer plant. You know, everybody knew that the sewer plant needed work. Well, we hired a professional to come in and we talked to all the you know, pertinent parties. We end up spending $135,000 and we got a nice set of plans that we're never gonna use. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't wanna do that for this building. Great. You know, I, if it has to be done in stages or whatever it might be, you know, I think that is a more prudent way instead of just hiring you know, um, a historical renovating firm to go in and say, okay, what do we need to do to fix this? And he comes back with these plans and it's going to be $6.5 million. It's like, oh, you know, and again, we throw away more money. I think this town has spent more money on pl plans and studies and stuff like that than we've spent actually improving any of the buildings mm -hmm. in town. So. Right. It, it is important to have someone that is willing to work with us yeah. and have reasonable expectations. Yeah. I mean, I agree with both. Um, what, like what is, what's holding up the process of acquiring the building? At this well, point? we heard one more hang up today. But. Uh, I thought you were here when I mentioned that. Maybe, uh, not. Maybe might not Simply have. one more bureaucratic hurdle, and it's a, a filing for a hearing in the probate court, either the Supreme Judicial Court or the probate court, and I understand Rick will talk about that. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you, I'm, Rick. I'm Rick Parker, um, and I'm co-moderator with Jack Cooper, uh, who spoke to... Yes. And went to yesterday. So we were told by our attorneys right from the very start that as much as they would like to expedite things, it, they had to go to the attorney general and that it may have to go to a court. Yep. Um, so we've now, they have worked through the attorney general's office um, and found that, that the attorney general's office said because it's a donation of, from a nonprofit at less than market value, their guidelines are it has to go before a court. I see. It looks like it's going to be a probate court. Um, is that local? And, and, <laughs> and I think it will be local. Okay. And um, they, uh, 
So, so it's, it's, we've gone to the Attorney General, we, we're past that stage. Uh, I don't know the exact timing of, of how quickly we get onto the, um, whatever it's called, the agenda of the probate court, but the docket, the docket but uh, the, the feeling we've gotten is it's still going ahead, it's still positive, it's, uh, so, so we it's think great. it's gonna happen. That's um, great news. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. so that's where it's at. But as, as Kip said, it's, I, I can't say it's a definite. Of course. So, so but it, Until it's you done. know. You, you take the actions I know that you want sure. and, or wait, um, but uh, I know hope, you're, I'm hopeful that it's going to proceed and be And your successful. intentions are, are to give it, and our intentions yes. are to take it. And we, right, right. We're so grateful, I mean, just to have that. Yeah, I mean, the I think property, it's, the building, and, and what we can do with it. I just want to think long term is, you know, the smartest thing that we can do and, right. and, have, the, yeah. and have the town people tell us, you know, as well. Yeah. Wendy, with an RFP based on the dollar amount, um, well, you'd have to do an RFP based on the, depending on how much you're will, you're, for what? you're you want to con contractually for um, what piece of for the, for the engineering study. Um, well, Money. what I was imagining first is, um, and we we're looking at having somebody come in and give us an estimate on what it would cost to do a sort of a very a basic structural assessment without an RFP. Um, I have to revisit the yeah, I know. the. We guidelines just, on yeah, we that. just went through that, but you know, you can in an RFP, on the cost. you can state what you want done. So to Kippy, Kippy, you know, you don't have to say, I, you know, I want to, you know, I want to build this thing out. I want to make it look the, like the Taj Mahal. Right. Um, but I'll tell you, my dad used to sit in the cellar back in the '60s and keep the uh, furnace going so the <laughs> services go. It's a dirt cellar. It's right. stone stack. Right. I got a 110 year old house I've lived in since I was four years old. It's a stone stack cellar. Right. You know what? It's fine. You just keep up with it. It hasn't fallen down yet. I can see the <laughs> Well, depends on who you talk to. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is, yeah, it, you know, you got hand-cut beams, you got all that stuff, but it's still there. Of, of you know, course. And I, I'm not saying it's, it's just it, it needs a TLC that it, of it, course. any, any, you, you do it to your own home. Right. Oh, you know, I know there's many, not, many you know, buildings before, around like like, that. You know, you, you don't tear off the side of your house until you obviously have an engineer or an architect come and say, I think you right. ought to do this, I think you ought to lay it out that way. And I'm not saying you spend $20,000. I think you could get something in my years of banking. Um, you know, you can get someone come in and give you, you know, uh, what they think. You know, an mm -hmm. appraisal, you know, you do how, you know, you, you do real estate appraisals as completed or as yeah. is or what have you. You just make it stated in the RFP, this is what you want. Right. You know, you're not looking yeah, I think to, I, to, to, to... I would develop something and come back to the board and we discuss it and, yeah. you know, go through that. You know, uh, if we do... What could we do with this? What could right. we do? This is, this is our need. We still have to right. actually, I, mean, I think, formally determine what our need is. But I think right mm -hmm. now, even to go that step, and this is what I'm recommending, even to go that next step, we need to do the basic... You know, we've gotten some feedback from our building commissioners about it, but I think we need, new, it's not that it's not neutral, but, you know, ex, outside yeah. uh, estimate of, you know, what the basic structural needs are to use this part of the building or that part or whatever, and just get an estimate on that. So before we spend a whole lot of money, we spend a little bit of money to determine whether we want to spend a whole lot of money and where we're going to spend You know, money. it's like when you do an appraisal for, you know, be a commercial or residential lending. It's as is. So you say, okay, we're not going to add a second floor. You know, we're not, right. the sanctuary is going to stay as such. We're going to do this with it. Sure. Can it bear the load? Can it do this? Correct. You know. Or what would it need to what do What would that? it need to do if you kept it as is? Right. You know, then when you're talking as completed, I mean, then you're, a whole, you're, you're in a whole different. Correct. You know, then, you know, obviously the scope the cost and everything else is because right. then you, you got to think, oh, well, you, you know, you're going to go down the basement, you're going to, you know, you're going to put in jacks, whatever you're going to do right. to shore it up. Right. So. And I, and I feel, um, and I feel like that we should, we should do that and in this, you know, as an as is, like, we're just going to do this, and we're going to beef it up, get it structurally sound. And then on, on a parallel path, we should say, uh, what else do we want to do with that space? I mean, do we want to actually make it strong enough for, um, to do a second floor? And what would we do up there? And, and how does the town, or, how would or we or use it for or spaces? Else do or, the maybe basement, not. or do the basement. Or base, we just, just, just say, can, can, what can I, never have. mind sprucing it up. Can, if you brought in right. people and whatever, just had activity, can it yep. bear the load? Right. 
Well, it's just important that it meets yeah. the needs of our seniors. Though. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we and that's can't more that. that's the back end of the building. Right. So, well, can we do or I mean, we the whole we want to be able to do programs. Right. And so, uh, you know, that's not, and important. Not to keep beating a, you know, beating it, but I think whatever was spent, I, you know, with it, with a, you know, a reputable engineer, you know, firm to just say, listen, this is what we want to do. We're not looking to turn it into a Taj Mahal or build out this or add that. Could we do as is? Right. And see if it, you know, it can, if it can, and I personally. If it can hold it. I think it can. But right. It'd be good to know. Kippy will agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, say you spent $5,000. <clears> I'll tell you, that's short money versus. Of course. You know, you go into it and go. Of course. You know, the scenario, I, I know, and I know the scenarios you're talking, you know. It's like Pandora's box. You open an old building up and... There's a lot to it. But I don't think that's the case, but that's just my personal opinion. Well, that's, that's something, you know, that can be discussed. Hmm. But there are certain needs that we have that we know that we can meet uh, with the building in, I'm not going to say shape, but in the Forming. configuration that it is now. Right. And uh, that will that will do those kinds of things, senior center type things that we've we've talked about. It's a great so space for it. That's what I'd like to see, and mm -hmm. I'd like to see it, you know, move as quickly and we, we can beat on whomever we have to beat on, like the yep. attorneys on both sides, to get them mm -hmm. going. To I know. Can I just say something? Sure. I know please. one of the things that's come up is you know getting a true assessment of the needs, and um, mm -hmm. you're having the meeting tomorrow. Of the Board of Oversight? Do you yes. Want to yes, we, we do have a, um, before our SCEMS meeting, we're, we have Board of Oversight meeting at the... Um, oh, Thursday. Thursday. Yes, I'm sorry, Thursday. Board of Oversight Senior Of Center. the Senior Center, yep. And um, I, I assume we'll, we do want to talk about their needs and where they're, you know, because I know they use the building now. When and if we get it, we've got to figure out where they're going to be. I know they're, they're, they're doing... Polish Club has been very generous to allow them to use some mm -hmm. some of the space there, and and we also want to try and push out some activities to the two other towns as well, and um, so so we'll have a, a chat tomorrow about that and how they can use the space, and and then to discuss the needs in the future and really you know what, think long term what, what what we can do with that space if 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 we you know if we can't use the whole thing or what we can use, or if you know or if we beef it up we can use the whole thing and. I just think we should think outside the box and, and, and make sure that we're thinking long term as well. Yeah, I, would, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but back when my son was little, when we used to go up to uh, Plum Island, there was an excellent ch children's museum in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And basically it took this, a church yeah. like that. And what they did, I don't believe it had a balcony, or it didn't have the, the you know, the yep. horseshoe. But basically what they did is they didn't rely on anything of the structure of the building. It's right in Portsmouth. Hmm. It's a smaller church, you know, much, but it's still a sanctuary. It was. And they basically built, built a children's museum using structural, you know, you know uh, framework or what have you. But they didn't rely on the building. Oh, and it was elevated. Right so they had, inside. like, two floors so the kids could go up and down. Cool. You know. So, I mean, it's, I mean you're There's saying think out of the box. Yeah. I mean... There's, there's ways to. There is a lot of room in that sanctuary. Absolutely, yeah. it's a huge well, space. Just I mean, so you know, New Hampshire has no building codes at all. Well, we knew. Well, <laughs> I, I knew. I knew that. I was. I was trying to hopefully you wouldn't say it, but yeah, yeah. Cop didn't see it. I didn't yeah. do it. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, yeah. You think out of the box. What could you do with that open space? Yeah, and I want to hear from you know from everybody also in town. You could also generate towns. revenue for the town. Just, I'm just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> So, I anyways. think we have, we have a great opportunity. Yeah, it's I think really great. But I think short money, if you did an RFP and got an engineer, like I say, whatever the 5,000 bucks, at least you know, yep. as is. Sure. Could you put people in there? Right. Could you do the build outs you want to do for ADA? For ADA, yep. Okay. That's all Thanks. I got. Thank say. you, guys. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Bruce, you have one more comment, Bruce? Not, not your no, yeah. He hasn't had a no, pen, no, no. so oh, he does have a pen. <laughs> no, I've heard more good conversation about this church built in the past 10 minutes yeah. than I have in the past six months on your select board meetings. Thank you. Because it's come through as honest and realistic, and that's not what has been coming through 
with oh, your sorry about board that. meetings. Yep. You know, it's making uh, you're leading people to believe that this is something they're going to be able to move into in a, a couple months and so right. forth. Instead of just telling I, the real truth, it could be anywhere from six months to 18 months. Right. And you're getting people's hopes up in the fact that, oh, we're going to have a new home. We're going to have a new home. Well, this Bruce, is the first Bruce, realistic. Bruce, we had expectations that this was ha going to happen relatively fast, like you said, back in February. And we were concerned about the summer on the seniors in the current building. Yeah, I, and I rightfully and so. And so now we have a real, more realistic time frame, and we have made it through the summer. But so, it hasn't even been a good explanation of what has to happen after you take the ownership. Mm -hmm. it, the, 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 it's been put across that as soon as you get it, we could do you'll be able to move right in. Things, right. Okay, and that's the, not the well, case. I'm sorry that came it's across. It's only the first step really of isn't. many steps. And You're that's, right about that. And, and that, that's all. I wouldn't have been here had that been put, come across. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay, so makes sense. just be more careful with some of the statements you made. That's thank all I'm you. asking you. Yep. So I think that our last meeting, Marlene was here from the senior center, and I specifically told her that you know, it, once the town takes possession, any activities that are now currently going on are going to stop. Right, you because did. it's going to take some time to do whatever it is we have to do to be you know, uh, ADA compliant or any any safety center. So right. you're just going to have to be patient. And you know, she wanted to be included in any sort of committee yeah, I heard stuff. that and, and I told her I wasn't aware of any committees yeah. but if we form one you know her input or anybody's input would be Valuable. greatly appreciated mm -hmm. but it's going to take some time so. but the the, the, the yeah. layman just assumes some time just don't yeah. understand that you've got all these processes you've got to go yeah. through an RFP you've got to uh, yeah. uh, get a co contact with it they're thinking time frame is, you know, a month, maybe two right. at the most. Yeah. They don't have a, a, any relative. You and I know good that the process that is slow. Anybody that's got involved in any kind of government right. knows that the process is extremely slow. Right. And as you said before, you know, this open meeting law just strangles uh, part-time government, sure okay, does. which is what all small towns are. They're part-time government. It absolutely strangles them because nobody can talk to anybody and get these things going during the day. Right. But I, I just ask you, make you know, if, when you are making statements, to if there's time involved, kind of lay it out that you know it's not a month, it's not two months. You know, it'd be as quickly as point. possible, but it could be. You know, right. these are some of the steps that make people just realize that you don't run down to the building, to the commissioner's office, and say hey, we need a certificate of occupancy type of situation. That's right. all. You know, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Dick, yep. your turn. I really didn't intend to say anything, but... You don't have to. I, mean, I, <laughs> I have to now. Dick, we I, rely on you. I absolutely agree with there needs to be an assessment done on the building. Not necessarily an architect, okay, but a structural engineer of some kind, okay? Then there needs to be an estimate done of the estimated cost of repairs not to repair the building, but to building the building into building code compliance. Right. Once you exceed 30% of the value, the assessed value of the building, it is mandatory to bring the entire building 100% up to code. Right. There is no phase in, there is no three years, five years, okay? Mm -hmm. That money, in other words, if that building is assessed for 300,000, when you hit 100,000, you bring everything to code, right. okay? I'll point out something that Bruce is well aware of. It has some knob and tube wiring that precludes you from insulating the building until you rid yourself of active knob and tube wiring, okay? A second floor triggers an elevator, right. okay? The ADA compliance with the bathrooms. You need these estimates of what this is going to cost you before you attempt to do any repairs, because if you trigger the 30% margin, you're gonna be stuck with a building you can't use, okay? And I have to say this, and it's pointed out, but don't blame me, people that are listening. The day the town of Deerfield owns that building is the day the building inspector must declare it unusable of for failure to comply with ADA requirements that's required by the state or the town. Right. Okay. So, talking about six months or 18 months, I do not see that happening 
because of appropriations for money that will have to be appropriated to renovate that building. Right. So my time frame is looking over a much longer time period. So I just want to point out that there. We hear you. Well, Dick, this, I, I, this engineering assessment must contain the state building code in the assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. But I also feel that we have some flexibility with special town meeting or whatever. Um, we don't for, want to be for a million so, dollars. Well, for whatever we decide is the path we choose to take. But we would go to the town, to the town would buy into it, okay. and then the town would appropriate the money if they chose to. Or so, say or no, not. forget it, or we don't not. want it. Well, that can't happen until you have this assessment done. Correct. That's and right. Until you we have, have this have in front of you. We have to have a game plan. Yeah. Without and a game plan, we can't go forward. And an assessment done with prevailing wages. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure. We don't have a choice. Okay. That's, that's what I wanted to point out. This is okay. not a six-month ordeal. Right. Six, you'd be lucky in six months if you can get your numbers together. Well, I would like to get it done in I mean, eight months. There is the process <laughs> you have to go through. I know. And be it's careful. not just who's going to do what. I know. It's I know. The I, I, rules you I would, have to follow. I, I would like to avoid another summer, but as time moves on, we may not. It, we not, may not. Okay. Say. Thank you. Thanks. So I think we're, um, let's see, at, at that point, we, anybody else have any more public comment you would like to share? I was just going to say, yes. you guys were to be congratulated. You could have been out of here in 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I haven't we even always stopped love to hear talking from you. about no. my, my meeting, the, the, uh, what I've been going to. I was going to we talk to, about um, how we're going to hustle we have to money. Go, we have to go into executive I'm, session at 7. I, I, I could have. Yeah. I saw her coming in. I wasn't fast enough. Carolyn, we have to go into executive session. <laughs> yes, so I'm going um, to move. I'm going to make a motion. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for your very passionate comments. Um, I make a motion. Uh, let's see. I move the select board into, into executive session. Um, as allowed by Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property as the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiation positioning, uh, negotiating position of the public body. Roll call vote. Well, I second it. Second. Um, all, all those in favor? Aye. Henry Camosa. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. And uh, the chair, we will return to public session as of uh, 8 p.m. Okay, welcome back to the Franklin, uh, the, Deerfield, <laughs> <laughs> the Deerfield Select Board um, meeting on uh, September 19th, reconvening after executive session at 8.07. Um, Bottom of the page of the uh, annotated notes. <clears throat> Top of the back page. Bear with me one <clears throat> sec. Let me get back. Um, we just may, need to do a motion to accept the gift, right? Nope. Uh, oh, nope. I'm sorry. I've got it here. Um, I move that the select board approve the right of entry of well, Deerfield. Start at, the, um, start, start at the top, please. Everything in red. Right. Oh, you know, or you okay. could, you. <laughs> we, uh, the board has reviewed and discussed documents and negotiated between legal counsel for Deerfield Academy and the town of Deerfield. And we will vote on these matters. Um, I move that the select board approve the right of entry of Deerfield Academy in the form attached here to for the purpose of constructing an EMS facility at 88 Greenfield Road. Second. Second. We both all, <laughs> sorry. All, the, all those agree? Aye. 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 I move that the select board has an intention to accept the gift of Deerfield Academy of an ES, EMS facility upon completion of the same. In contemplation of the gift not yet accepted, the town will in good faith execute a gift agreement to be held in escrow pending the completion of the EMS facility and the presentment presentment mm -hmm. of the gift to the town. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We just need to sign them, right? Yep. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. I can give you a copy here. You can use one of yours. I just want to make sure I get everything to sign. There's nothing on parchment or anything like that. So. Whoever wants to start. Um, we also, is that, do we also sign the right of entry agreement as well? Um, yeah, go ahead and sign both. Take it from there. Do you want all three copies signed? Is that the idea? Um, sure, why not? Okay. Uh, then we'll have originals. Here's one that's not stapled. That's not stapled. Oh, here's the other one that's not stapled. So just sign two of those stapled ones and one unstapled one. Okay. This one's signed. Um, oh, did you talk about the Eversource? Not yet. No. Oh, okay. They did contact me. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, to say that they were going to do transmission work. Um, so it is not related to to the pipeline or anything like that. It's, it's just maintenance work on Upper Road and um, Keats Road. You've got this in your folder? There? Yes. They contacted us. Um, they met with myself and the police chief, um, highway super, and we, they, we talked about a few issues and we encouraged them to contact you. Um, Carolyn, um, would you, you know? Yep, they did. Um, it sounds very reasonable they're doing um you know there's no spraying it's actually cutting yes. they're replacing these high tension intensity yep. the poles and they're be doing a bit of tree cutting they've already been actively talking to the abutters um they have a whole plan to do so and it's all in this document and you know um, everything is going to be made uh known to everybody um, I guess I should say that I'm in a butter too, um, you know. I am too, but I'm not sure if they're doing that line. No, they're doing the line no, that goes up by my house. Okay. Here's the um, map for the Greenfield, you know, by the uh, Greenfield Meadows, um, you know, golf course, mm -hmm. and then over by Keats Road and yeah. the River Road that way. So it's coming oh. up. I think you only have this one there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And um, this. Hawks Road. This is Old Albany Road. Right? Sure. It's the road, the line crosses Old World, Old Albany, Upper, Lower, Pogues Hole, Old Ferry, Greenfield, Keats, River, and McClellan Roads. Yep. And this is starting next in a couple of weeks and through mid December. Removing hazard trees and um, brush control and um, so okay. last one okay I think struggle <laughs> um Everyone at the in, in lieu of the fact that I have a test tomorrow, that I need to go home and study. I won't get into this, but I, I really did want to go over this. Don't worry. But listen, you should be happy because I figured out I've been practicing for two days to write better. I have the forms, and I can write better. For, um, you know, I know how to write better requests that will get us our resources and make put us to the top of the line if we had an emergency. Thank you. And it time. will be, I just want to go over the format in case I'm not here. Okay. And, um, and it's very, very good. It's very good explanation of what, what you do, when you do it, um, and, and, you, and you stress life safety. So there's certain language that you put in. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Great. It's very intense. Um, but I got a lot out of it. You, is your last day tomorrow? Last day tomorrow. And the test? Three days, yeah, and the test. I have a test tomorrow afternoon, so i got to go home and study. But I, don't, I don't do this enough to make it without studying, but um, it's very good. 
and it will definitely benefit us. So I'm glad I signed up for the class. And it didn't cost us any money. Great. Um, I got a, we got uh, this paid for by Homeland Security. Nice. Um, but there's people all up and down the valley, so it's really, it's a, a, it's a good um, networking opportunity. Yeah. Where do you take it? Where's the class? Um, the, well, the class was actually at the FERCOG. Oh, um, good. But in my group was Springfield, which yeah. has had a lot of experience with the tornado. tornadoes and Snowtober. And yep, yep. You know, all kinds of stuff. So um, anyway, it's interesting. And um, you get matched up in teams and you work together. So it's a very nice. good opportunity. Oh, you know what? I can't read this right now. Just, I have no time. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back in my mail. This is Lincoln Institute stuff. Oh. I just don't have time for this. I'll look at it. I didn't see it. It didn't. Oh, okay. Can you just give it to Wendy? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm. I got, I got to get ready for. I got two drills next month. I just can't do it. No time. Um. Key, I just want to um, tell you, you have done a wonderful job with the minutes. Um, I appreciate that. I wasn't here to vote on them, but I reviewed them. And um, uh, I just want you to know I really appreciate it. It's nice to have really complete notes. Not that Wendy didn't have complete notes, but we went many months with my notes, which were very sad, very limited. So I appreciate it. The only thing left here is the uh, warrants to sign. So I'll leave those for you. Right. And tip. Yep. Good to go. Um, um, I'm going to give these. Can you pass that to Wendy? Just so I don't can. lose those. Our next uh, upcoming meeting is October 4th at 6 p.m. And with that, take a motion to adjourn unless anybody else has anything to add. No. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody.